sorts of things. But again, it's time to hear what you guys think about this matchup. Of course, we have a potential for draw, so we're going to have that. And 68% for reciprocity, 11% for draw, and 21 for ESG. And honestly, makes quite a bit of sense. That's surprisingly high for, for ESG, just, just on the case of them really yeah. being, I think it was third or fourth place in Challenger League, and kind of squeaking by almost more off the fact that uh, Egan couldn't bring it yes, in the qualifiers, uh, in the uh, relegation. So, I mean, completely agree. It's, uh, it's a big gamble on that 21%. I do hope that they, uh, they can prove it, though. Yeah, of course, those polls are up right before every single matchup on social media. So make sure you head to Twitter on ESL Rainbow Six and check them out to be, to be able to vote on everything. So we know what you guys think. It's pretty darn important to remind everybody before the start of the season. Maybe there's a lot of newcomers in chat. Oh, say welcome. Welcome to Pro League. And I think we're ready to get into the game. There we go. Right, so, cool. first matchup of North America for Season 9 of Pro League. Ladies and gentlemen, Accelerate versus Team Reciprocity. And that will take shape on Consulate, our first map. Yeah, this should be interesting. I mean, it's uh, a pretty well-stabilized map for the most part, especially without any operating changes. It should be pretty standardized in terms of how people are going to play it, but at the same time, with Accelerate being a, a newer team, I, I got to imagine they probably played Consulate at least once in Challenger League to show it off, but at the same time, they're going to be bringing, I would think, some new strategies to it. There goes Blackbeard out, which is not a surprise at all for uh, Consulate. It's just, I mean, he's so good on this map. You definitely want to take him out. Uh, we could also see Glasgow, but nope, it's going to be Dokubi. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, the smokes have had a big effect on things. Thankfully, not so much on the frame rates due to the uh, patch that just came out. <laughs> that is very true. And, well, Blackbeard here being removed as well. And that was removed by Accelerate, which makes sense. I mean, they don't want to deal with Retro on the Blackbeard, yeah. which is his signature operator, really. You don't want to deal with Laxing on Blackbeard. Well, that is very true back in the day. So Valkyrie is going to get banned. And Maestro will be the one as well removed. So Echo will remain in play. Uh, Mira will be in play as well. As we mentioned it quite a few times, Consulate is really not the map to ban Mira on. She she has her role. She has positions where she can be very strong. But that's her in a nutshell. Well, it's but funny if you think about it. The two camera-related operators on defense were both banned. So that means now you've got to put up windows instead. But also, the person who could hack the cameras now banned as well. So it should be a, a lot of face-checking or drone-checking coming out here uh, as well as from those uh, windows because there's not a lot else you can do to be able to spot people out now. No, I'm pretty interested in seeing um, how the dock's going to be played or achieved here because uh, bulletproof cameras have been used quite a bit by teams like Rogue and EG. It's just we don't get to see, and even Dark Zero, but we don't really get to see a ton of it because of the bulletproof camera being a bit difficult to spot, etc. But like, there you go. Chief is going to set it up. There you go. So instead of having a maestro, we're going to have a bulletproof camera in here, which still, even though you can't move the angle on it, can see through smokes. Yeah, in that particular spot, you don't really need to move it because that's exactly where it needs to be. There you go. Reinforcements from Bio in as the Mira will be in play. Shlongi is going to be playing the Vigil, so expect to late flanks throughout the round. Maybe he's going to play upstairs. There you go. He's going to yeah. set up upstairs here in the set it's area. It's good setup because they've got both the uh, the hole that he just created as well as the hatch open from to rotate back down. It's just a question of will oh. they let him take control of piano. This is an old thing. Oh, this would be fun. This, this used to get played, Attackers no longer the really the case, but objective is to the, the, the mirror window here does give you information on how things are going, but you still have to worry about uh, the buck upstairs and quite possibly the sledge that's helping him out. So. Just taking control of that the, the piano area of the map here is very important. For the yeah, track. especially considering you pop that window from above, you know, the same way you're going to go for the bathroom. Exactly. Well, the drone's going to come up, and this is an important thing for a lot of teams. Clear the top floor 100%. Make sure there is nobody that can challenge you from that side of the map, just so you don't get late flanked. Or at least, if you're going to get flanked later on in the round, you'll know where things are going to be coming from, and you have someone watching, and you see the uh, holes here for the doors have already been boarded up, so Fox has an idea. There's a player in the back, and they're going to have to deal with him. And Well, Nyx is actually in here on the yellow stairs. Shlongi will drop down into Piano. Bio's down, and the drone will get taken out. Fortunately, the ERC has been popped right before the drone was able to spot the Vigil. And Fox is just looking down the spiral staircase. There's nobody upstairs up anymore, and without even a single bullet, bullet being fired, it's just pressure forcing the Vigil 
back down to the side. Well, you did see the red ping when he was looking down there as well, so you know they managed to get a ping on him at least once, plus detecting the static on the drone as well. I was going to pick him up, so they, they have an idea they need to clear him, they just don't know where he's at, and that's really going to burn up a lot of their time here, unless this guy is very efficient in catching him out with those grenades, perhaps, as long as he doesn't have anything to stop those with no Jaeger on the board, means he's just going to have to hope those don't land right on him. And Schlange is in the bathroom. It's a very strong position here for him to hold, and he's spotted. But we'll get one, get refragged instantly here. So the Bucks is going to be lost for the Vigil. That is a pretty positive trade here for the defense. And Nyx finds that shot on Retro as well, peeking with no information on anybody downstairs here. Finally, the Sledge of Fox is in breaching the top. The mirror window, as you mentioned, will get popped. And that mirror, mirror window being popped is actually a negative thing here for um, the reciprocity. It's just, well, you're going to try to thermite it, but it's going to be very complicated. S stuff can just be thrown at you, and Marcus is at least going to find one on Crusher here to take down the Bandit, but the more important thing, he takes down the C4 that could have stopped that thermite breach, which will be coming up as Mark just falls back, just playing more of a flexible support role on the squad. He's doing a good job of it, but Fox really having to put the most pressure here on to try and get anyone out of position to give Mark those angles to work with, but he's going to get both sides of the wall open as a result, and that's really going to make all the difference. However, the frags coming out from downstairs actually putting this pretty heavily in Accelerate's favor already. Yeah, Bio still low on health. There's 15 seconds on the clock, and Reciprocity have to run in. The smoke is on the floor, but not killed just yet. There you go. Finally off, but the Ragdoll throws the aim off the ground, and Bio get one. A cheat for the second. Laxing will go down, and EXG to take the very first round here on Consulate. A bit of a blunder, I have to say, from Reciprocity. They just, they had map control and just forgot to drone. It's, I, I had this conversation online, but still had this conversation with uh, a couple of guys in North America, specifically from EG. It's like, yeah, it's very easy to spot what C9 now reciprocity do. They just, they drone heavily early on, and then they kind of forget that they have drones and end up losing a ton of them. To be fair, a couple of the players were already dead. Two players had already died yeah. before they were able to get very close. But that's the Those thing. people can't put down new drones. But but the thing is, protect your bomb that's when you slow down, right? Maybe you should have, you know, yeah. used the drones if you would have spotted the vigil there in the back. Maybe the grenade to, to be used. The, the wall was soft into the bathroom from piano. There was so many ways to flexibly push into the bathroom because there's only one way to escape. I would say the problem wasn't necessarily the late game droning so much as the fact that there weren't droning for the roam clear as yeah. effectively because you had a lot of bodies going for that roam clear and they were trying to push that vigil out and doing a decent job of it. The problem is they weren't uh, putting enough pressure on cornering him because of having someone like Mark, for example, droning outside. And they might have had some support for that, but they seemed to lose some of those drones early on. And like you said, didn't have backups for those. They weren't able to put enough pressure to effectively kill the roamers Attacking and allow some of those entry players, players to get more on flank rolls and support rolls, but then they lost two of them. And yeah, it was definitely a domino effect and not slowing down at the end to be able to drone. As you saw, though, a lot of uh, time pressure really working against the attackers, though, towards the end of that. Indeed. Well, here we'll get to see how things run up for our very second round. So, Accelerate are now running on the top floor by the consulate chambers, so we're going to have Bio playing on the Echo, and a bomb is Schlong located. is actually playing a pretty important operator for the setup here on the Legion, which just means Yellow Stairs is going to be much easier to hold for you. You can slow down your opponent's smoke, plus Legion combo on those Yellow Stairs is insane. And keep in mind, you still have the pulse, so a lot of information can be relayed. Bio playing the Echo will be extremely important for the squad as well, just to give information and delay the late plants if Reciprocity will make the same mistakes not really managing their time correctly like they did in the previous round. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how things play out because it's a different bomb site, but also four of the five operators are totally different on defense, whereas they've only changed up one on attack, but they switched up who was playing Capital, for example, so Retro taking over the Jackal role hopefully will help make a, a little bit for the fact of that droning being a problem for them, but at the same time, he's got to live through that and not just face check a bullet trying to get in and get those footprints. And what's the big problem? You have no hard breach on Reciprocity. They were expecting this site, uh, which, you know, is still okay with not playing any hard breach, but if, if you wanted to take from the admin side, you Attackers need a Habana. And remember, both of these uh, uh, hard breachers, oh, well, all three hard breachers are available to play. And in my opinion, an attack 
onto this top floor via admin is just so much easier with Habana. You should never play Thermite with it. Here, they kind of make the gamble. They could have at least had some extra lines of sight to play in here. It's but possible they might have anticipated it being a lobby play instead. It's very possible, but EXG are running a couple players downstairs, and Reciprocity have not cleared it at all. It seems that they're kind of blind on what's going on downstairs, and Mark is just watching for any potential rotates here in the connector room, and there's no one on the site. They're just playing from below, and they want to get the information, but Schlongi will find one on Laxing. Low on health, but that's more than enough to shut down the flank from Reciprocity. C4 will come in, Mark will go down, and the Shark is not biting. It's literally everybody else here. And Retro's gonna have to find a position to set up his uh, diffuser here. It's it's a big problem. You can plant in the smoke, my friend, but there's a pulse downstairs. You see a late rotate here from Fox. As Retro will find the kill even when he is yokai'd. Fox will get one more on the back. Retro with another. Fox with one more, and it's all up to Crusher. Skies will find him and finish the round, and somehow Reciprocity will turn the round from an absolute failure to a complete win as Accelerate kind of put too many bodies downstairs and all have to funnel back up the yellow stairs. It really seemed like that was their plan, was we're going to take, we're going to use smokes effectively to cut off all rotations that can stop us from getting in. You saw how well Skies got in, was able to push over near the bathroom door and really take control of that entire room because of the smokes going there. And then he didn't have to worry so much about long deaths because he was in that corner, able to watch towards the yellow stairs door. No one's going to be able to magically teleport into the bathroom, so he doesn't have to watch that door as well. So just the fact that they were able to cut off all those retake positions, yeah, they had to sacrifice a bit. The, the Pulse was able to do some damage on them. They did manage to lose some other players, but it was that entire control of that site because the smoke cutoffs that gave them all the positional advantage to be able to take all of those gunfights pushing in because, well, they had to push in to stop the plant. Yeah, they didn't save really smokes for the plant for the most part, but at the same time, you know, they didn't really need to. They had the control and winning those gunfights was all it took. So good on them and taking advantage of having the vertical height to be able to force everyone else to rotate up because, well, there's no uh, operators that can magically fly up hatches just yet, so. Trap the, uh, the defenders where they can be, ideas. right? It's gonna be a Batman soon. Retro more. though, top frag in here to start off with is a good uh, start. For considering the role changes have shifted around a bit, it's nice to see that he's, uh, I mean, he's not always the top fragger, he's not always the bottom fragger, but he's doing quite well today, and it seems like everyone else is at remaining. least doing their job, even if it's not always uh, no. a round win. I mean, it, it is a very different role left. for Retro specifically, because of the Blackbeard ban, uh, by reciprocity. The it's just, uh, actually, this is very odd. Was it reciprocity that banned the Blackbeard? I believe it was. No, was it, no, was it Accelerate? Yeah. Yeah. Because that it wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, no, it would it wouldn't. I mean, especially if this was Clubhouse, for example, right? Yeah. So, uh, Blackbeard at Clubhouse is pretty uh, interesting. Because Blackbeard was the first band, so that's yeah. Accelerate. And so so far, everyone's pretty much, the, most of the rest of the team, the rest of the is playing roles are very comfortable with Fox, plays a lot of Sledge. Um, this guy's, I mean, he he was teasing playing the, uh, the IQ, which he's played a lot, but he's also played quite a bit of Buck as well. And Laxing can frag out very well on, thir on uh, Thatcher, I mean, so not a surprise there either. But we don't have a ton of uh, idea on how Accelerate should be playing at the Pro League level, so it's hard to say whether or not they're playing to their strengths or having to try and adapt to what they've done research-wise on Respawn. They, they have, they have had pretty good success in the very first round. Again, we're only a couple rounds in, so there's not a ton of info for everyone to play with. Uh, but at least this time, our are are gonna start by droning the top floor. Very good, you drone the top floor, you realize, okay, there's nobody up there and we're attacking lobby. So let's just take it. And that's exactly what Fox is gonna do. He goes in through admin and the hatches are gonna get shut down here, of course. Uh, big power of the sledge. You also have skies on the buck to combo with it. Crusher's just gonna sit up of goo mine here upstairs just to slow things down <laughs> if someone wants to peek or push through that uh, that hatch he'll have some visual and audio cue on what's going on at top floor legion is still an extremely powerful operator and there well, you go you hear it come out i mean the legion throwing his goo up and then it getting shot was was more than enough information to know someone was in that room able to see exactly when he threw that up so that's good information for him yeah it doesn't get a little bit of damage on the way down but certainly slowing down their ability to try and push towards that piano and the important thing, though, is they've got to worry about Achieved on that pulse. You know he's going to be playing down in the basement if you know there's a pulse on the other team, which, well, you know, with six pick, you know only one operator can change. So they've got to have some idea they're going to have to deal with him eventually. Now, Achieved is playing all the way downstairs on the pulse. It's a very strong operator to have there, especially with the amount of floors that are destructible. So just being able to, to get a heartbeat on your opponents downstairs. Oh, no, Crusher's going to find the kill on Skies, and 
He used the hole that Skies just opened up. What are they... How do the holes work here, Devin? I, I think they work both ways. Yeah, I think they do. I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, unless something's gone wrong, they're usually working both ways. <laughs> that's a highlight sentence here, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Retro trying to do you know what we were talking about last round to make up a little bit for things in terms of trying to catch some footprints, but I think a lot of the defenders are in fairly static positions and probably don't have a lot of footprints left. Lack oh, as I said, oh, oh yeah. Lexing! <laughs> He'll find one wow. and two! Uh, the third one, not enough to shoot him down. Shlongi will take the damage, but that's a 3v3, and Retro will hold off in the rotate. Mark and Fox will get the last two. <laughs> This is a right <laughs> knife, right? When you just hella, and, and that's the thing, he <laughs> he came off the yokai the instant he was getting knife, and was like, "Umao mission did it, not even they just die." Yeah, that's where you, that's where you unfortunately have to change your pants during sixth pick after that. Oh man, I, <laughs> Jaeger himself is gonna have a lot of fun with this one. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, an unfortunate situation, but. Nonetheless, we're seeing a lot of these rounds that they're winning come down to a lot of kills coming out from Reciprocity at the end. They don't seem so heavy on getting the plant down. It seems like no. they're forcing uh, Accelerate's hand in terms of getting them to push before the plant happens. And here's the thing. A lot of people have been talking about this last night. It's like, well, the squad is now a lot more frag heavy. It seems to be working in the end of the rounds. Yeah, at least here against the XG in the first couple rounds. Yes, will that continue? Just have to find out. We'll see, especially on defense as well, where, where you have to play very differently than you do on attack. But you never know. I, mean, I do feel like uh, this team may have Bomb the potential to gel a little bit better than Obey did, which is the other team that was criticized for having a similar problem. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it, it is left to be seen. But I do think there, that is unlikely to be a problem that is repeated twice. But, like you mentioned earlier, droning probably still could use a little bit of work. Yeah, each region really has a team like that. A lot of people have looked at the new Team Liquid lineup and said the same thing. The stream with uh, the Uno pickup as well. Oh, yeah. Pretty Five much the go. same thing for a lot of the fans out there. So, you know, we'll, we'll see We'll see how things shape up in all the regions. Here. Well, they are definitely going to be doing some denial of those drones that they're going to be bringing out to the mute this time on Garage. Also, hey. the Pulse. So they're changing up their Garage yeah. defense a little. Not going to put a mirror window on the Garage door this time. As that didn't work out so well once Mark took advantage of it. And honestly, still, to some extent, putting a mirror window on the wall, especially if you can't deny your opponents in piano can work out very well in your in, in your advantage because if you do that then your opponents instinctively will just try to pop it but if they do it actually allows your bandit to just chuck a c4 through the window and get something out of it and it has happened in the past and that's why you know, we really see a ton of those mirror windows being played and of course not in this round it's just a bit to highlight what was in the past. Now, this Prostator, of course, running laxing with EMP. Oh. here, and oh man! Skies dives in on the bio, but Achieved is ready. Two players line up, but just an inch too far. Skies isn't able to get the two piece here, but taking down bio is a pretty big hit early on. I mean, still, you lose the buck. The round, most of the rounds that uh, Skies has been dying early on as the entry haven't really been a huge detriment to Reciprocity. They've been able to pick it up afterwards. Yes, one of the rounds he was left alive when it was up on the top floor, but last round he also died early on, and it didn't seem to make a big difference because everyone else, as you said, there's a lot of fraggers on the team, seems to be able to make up for that. You see, now they don't have to really worry about any utility. The bulletproof camera in the back is just gonna stay there, Ooh. Fox! Threads the Needle Crusher is going to go down and get crushed here. No C4 available. Schlongi will be running the Nitro, though. And the interesting thing is that he's not running Mute with a shotgun. I remind you that SMG11 Mute is a brand new thing. And because of that, a lot of teams are like, you know what? We don't really have to play Smoke all the time because we can just run Mute with a shotgun. And it's a great change of pace in a meta. <laughs> no! Retro sprays through the wall and Rachid will go down. That was soft, my man. What is going on? They Two players tried to put up the wall earlier and punished him for it. But... <laughs> Two players still in here for Accelerate the Smoke and the Mute, both SAS operators. Nix is spotted, now shotgun up in his hands. He'll try to rush up to his opponents, but that's way too long of range to expect your shotgun to hit. C4 will not connect as the diffuser will go down on the side in retro. Finding the shot on Schlongi and tanking him out. Reciprocity, absolute units in this round, demolishing Accelerate. And really, Accelerate kind of putting themselves in positions where 
It's just way too easy to pick them off. It seems like they're trying to play a little more fluid, but I think in doing so, they're often walking into Reciprocity's gunfire. I mean, it's that's the thing. Is, is a team as well-oiled? You know, yeah, they have one new person, but they're still a very well-oiled machine, especially considering you know the history that goes back with the Skies and Laxing as well, that they know what to be doing in terms of covering for each other. And Mark seems to be doing a fine job with the IGLing in terms of making sure that happens. Whereas Accelerate seem to be trying to improvise a lot. I mean, maybe yeah. they're making a lot of calls as well that are not necessarily bad calls, but they're... They're just not working. They, they don't have drones. We saw what happened. They lost two camera operators. They're now depending on bulletproof cameras and default cams to be able to spot stuff, and that's really working against them. Yeah, bringing the pulse is helping a little bit because they're able to get a little more positional intel. But that's very limited window in, in intel. And because of that, they can't really... Uh, anticipate where a lot of those crossfires are going to be. And so they're trying to rotate right into those positions, and it's really working against them. You saw that even with the shotgun play, walking up to the garage door without any intel on it, thinking, oh, I'm going to shotgun the planter. It was just a series of misplays like that. Now, this is an interesting site. It's We've, we've had it since the second half of the last season yeah. uh, added here. Of course, we're talking about uh, the visa entry and down in the servers you know, on Consulate. Now, I've been seeing a lot of these Reddit posts where it's like, hey, I'm very interested in this map or in this site. Which matches would you guys recommend? If you want to learn this site, I highly recommend that you go back to Season 8 and watch, I think it was Week 12, no, Week 12 or 13 in EU, where this was a game between Mocket uh, and Team Secret. Back then, they were they were not known as Mocket. And... I think the, the G2 versus Vitality, I believe it was, was also very educational on this bomb site. Yes, but that was the, literally the first time it was played. I also highly recommend Chaos versus Millennium on this because Alibi was a very interesting operator. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, she's a roamer, blah, blah, blah. No, she, with her utility, can actually play very strong when it comes to like, setups around uh, site or mirror windows, etc. There's, there's a lot of stuff and intricacies when it comes to these sort of uh, detailed operators. So it's interesting that, that Skies went back over to IQ, something you expect the first round. I believe it's because they anticipated it being a console play again upstairs, mm -hmm. expected the echo, which there is, yes. and were well prepared for it. So it was a good choice by Skies that just happened to work out despite the bomb site not being the one that they expected. And now, a lot of people look at this and they're like, hey, the, you just walk into the site and it's taken. No, you need to clear the top floor. And even at times, go in from the bottom <laughs> as well. Don't. Do that, Shlongi will take so much damage as of just giving away his spot. You can, people can see you through the wall. What are you doing, man? Yeah, I think they're uh, assuming a lot of soft walls are a little harder than they are in terms of what happened last round as well with Garage. Yeah. Anyways, Retro is just watching here on the console chamber window. Not going to find anyone just yet. Fox will come in, and he lands the shot on Achieve. There's still the rotation hole, and Fox will try to peek it, but to no avail, and they have control of the site, but does that mean they have full control? That's the real big deal, because Bio still in, Fox will find to get dropped by Schlongi, who's low on health, and goes back up. Unfortunately, Retro was not able to take him out before in connector. Mark's watching, and this round is getting a bit scrappy here still. There's still C4 available, even with the Yokai dead, and Mark is gonna go for the plant. Bio will spot him, and he has Nitro Cell here, so he should be able to take him down, Attack even if he's right at the edge. Either. No. He was right at the edge. He could have been c 4 from the inside of the room in which most of his body was set. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that would have still been lethal. Well, either I, way. Not even trying. I, I really don't know what happened there. Crusher is going to go down. That's another C4 down, and that's the mirror as well. Shlongi taken out, and Bio last minute alive. He's spotted by Skies here, and Retro will push him at the same time. He moves in to the site, but Bio will go down, and Retro will get an easy kill at the end, really putting uh, a lot of work here on the Jackal, an operator that we've seen Fox playing quite considerably in the past, and hopefully in the future here. But there you go. Round six is going to start off, and... Reciprocity have complete control and Accelerate just kind of fell apart. Yeah, I mean, they had a good first round, but they, I think they had the element of surprise at that moment. Doesn't seem to be the case now, and I, I think that was well played by Reciprocity as well. They had control of the actual bomb site very early, very quickly, and the, really the only thing they had to worry about was Bio down there on that pulse. Him not pulling the trigger when he needed to pretty much guaranteed that they were going to win that round for the most part, but as there was no way to stop anything at that point. 
but this is the thing that boggles my mind. This is the site where just walking into it doesn't just win you the, the site. No, you have a lot of windows and doors to lock. And a lot of like holes that are destroyed on the top floor and on the bottom floor. Well, you have a rotational right next to two sets of stairs, right? I mean, I, I guess one that goes up to two it, different it's floors. Still, but... It's still only a rotation hole, but like there's a big setup played downstairs in the yeah. server room. That also you have three C4s on play. You can Evolution. pretty much guarantee Pulse is going to be down there. You also have the ability to blow floors up in admin and have angles on players that are planting, and yet you do none of that. None, in my opinion, that round, that round, that site is just no homework whatsoever. Yeah. By EX. Well, I mean, they went for the element of surprise, but unfortunately, it seems like the uh, the trick was on them. It, again, it did also work out. Sky's picking up the, the IQ, knowing that they might have an Echo, which again, he has done this round. It will work well last round, probably work this round as well. And he also has the potential to spot achieved on that pulse if he has uh, concerns about that. I mean, they're pretty much going to know he's going to be down in the basement. I mean, there's really very little other way to play pulse on this map in terms of uh, the way you play him. Regardless of the floor, even if it's the top floor bomb site, you're still going to be running him down in archives most of the time. So we'll see though. The jackal has been working out fairly well for Retro. He did have a little trouble killing the Legion and did get Goomind, but then he immediately turned around, got his footprints, and said, "Well, that's the end of you, Schlongy. You did get Fox, but that's that's the end of the road for that." So. Yeah. Seem to be working out and achieved again going down. That was probably a floor bang, given the fact that it was by skies with the pistol and directly headshot. Most likely a floor bang from above. Yeah, and, and just to, to elaborate on that, uh, Pulse, of course, when he has his, uh, his scanner up, he's spotted by the IQ when she has her scanner up. Yeah. So that's. That's what you know. Devin means there by the the bang. It also would uh, would potentially stop them from doing the vigil roam they tried to do earlier, but they have yet to repeat that. And again, have focused on the pulse instead. But either one of those is going to be very vulnerable to skies. And like I said, he's doing a good job with that as long as he stays alive again, which he has done much longer on IQ than he has on Buck. He's going to be able to, to suss out the uh, yokai drones as well. So seems to be working out even better now that they're warmed up outside of that first round. Let's see, though. If they can get the same map control. They seem to depend on smokes a lot for this, and if Retro gets caught throwing that smoke... Oh. Well, no. Nope. Well. He's going to do the catching. All right, well, Skies will get one more. As Fox will get another on Nyx, and it's just now Bio on his own. Uh, Yokai's can do a lot of work, and somehow he's still alive, but Retro is in here to finish things off. The reciprocity are in complete control. 5-1 here in the first half, and, well, this is the, the flip side of the coin. Yeah. Yeah, sure, you have an extra round to play on the site, but 5-1 is... I'm no mathematician, but 5-1 is more difficult to come back from from 4-1. It was more difficult to come back from earlier on before it went to six rounds, I'll tell you what. And here's the thing, <laughs> this is consulate. This is one of the most equal and balanced maps when it comes to defender versus attacker win rates. Yeah. Well, in this case, I mean, you could argue that maybe this isn't a balanced matchup, just just off the caliber of the team. It's, but it's very possible. It, it really depends. I mean, this is a Accelerate's chance to warm up and prove it. I expect that they should get better throughout the season, and this is really the perfect time to learn a lot from this. I hope regardless of how this turns out, I mean, very likely to go reciprocity way, but either way, a lot of learning opportunity for Accelerate to bring into week two. And this is something that Laxing said uh, last night, actually, in uh, uh, a bit of an AMA. There you go. Retro on 10 kills and one wow. death. That is a complete reversal than what we've seen Retro doing in the past while. Seems to be working out what he's doing. I mean, like I said, on the uh, the Capitao, on the Jackal, his rolls. On some, and it, we're seeing Reciprocity is a team that seems to do very well with support fraggers, whether that be uh, Laxon playing support or Mark playing support or And that's the thing. Retro. Retro and Mark are now the main support players for the team. The Retro yeah. is like yeah, your main anchor support. Too. That's why you see him really playing the smoke in here. Uh, Mark is their flex support player. That's why you saw him you know, playing the Thermite now. He's playing the Echo. You know, whatever they need, they need the support, they need whatever, he's there to fill the role. And of course, Retro not having access to the Blackbeard because of the ban in the first seven rounds of, or the first six rounds of the first half. Didn't seem to hold him back. Yeah, that's for sure. And uh, after that first round, it's just everybody got together and the game kind of slowed down here for itself. Funny part is Retro still play basically the same role in yep. terms of holding that window as if you were a Blackbeard. Is he so comfortable holding that window? It didn't seem to matter. That's very true. Well, Schlongy now will watch it from the outside as uh, looks like Accelerate will try to go in for a take through admin. A very standard way of attacking your on top floor. 
can just go in, and there's no one from Reciprocity really to stop them. Deploying just, sensor. Uh, Fox is here at least trying to gather some information on the position of his opponents. Oh, missed. Oh drugs. my. No. He's oh get no, the drone. C4 is going to get thrown out and will not connect. All right, Fox just understandably will not jump out. He is running the Aren't disgusting lineup deployed? of a uh, long barrel UMP with a red dot. Now, the difference, though, is he's the only one with C4 on the team, whereas Accelerate, we're playing a lot more C4s. Yep. That is very true, but at least you'll have some information to play I off of. You have three information bomb. operators on Reciprocity. Legion, Echo, and Pulse. And each one does their thing in a different way. And this is interesting. Retro, uh, not really on A, which is what usually happens when it comes well, to support player. For exactly the reason you see there, there's a wall getting opened by the Habana. Something yeah. you mentioned, they didn't play on Reciprocity on their attacks. Because they never attacked from Admin. Yeah. Accelerator going to play a much more conventional meta standard on that attack. Yeah, and it's conventional because it, it really does work. <laughs> yeah, well, Th that's, that's, that tends to make convention, doesn't it? <laughs> very, very true. You know, the English may not be my first language, but yeah, it does make a lot of sense. Well, Fox is going to be watching here from the stairs, and you see everything really being blown up here uh, by reciprocity earlier on in the round. And set up base. Oh, watching the yokai. Mark will lose it out, and Retro will get taken down by Achieved. Uh, it was just rappelling off the side of the window, and we'll find him in the connector room. Yeah, that's the only problem with playing outside of yes. the uh, A-bomb site. This is a little more dangerous to be in there, but Laxing does trade it back with the Zofia and achieved getting one more slightly in favor of Accelerate here. Yeah, losing the smoke is the big deal here, but they get the spot on the Operator inside of Connector, and Mark will lose the fight. Bio will be able to take him out even left at half HP. UMP, of course, the angle grip means that you can ADS much, much faster. In my mind, the only way to play the UMP correctly. Laxing will try to peek in as uh, Reciprocity will go in for the retake from the opposite end. Achieved will find Laxing as there's nobody to watch up the window. Limited manpower here, but still, 12 seconds on the clock. The fuser will get set by Biologic. And Fox will try to thread the needle. Achieved is ready in the ACOG. We'll win it out. Reciprocity will go down. Finally, the streak is going to be broken and Accelerate put their second round on the board. And I think some of this really didn't work out for a reciprocity, partially because a lot of people didn't walk into a place where Fox could catch them in, in terms of intel. He had a little bit of positioning down towards Visa for a little bit, but as soon as he threw that C4, kind of took a big risk and was forced to run off, kind of played more like Canadian tends to on the spiral stairs. But because of that, he wasn't able to effectively use his, his cardiac sensor, was spending much more time just aiming down sights, looking for someone to walk into that. He was very ineffective a good majority of the round because of that and kind of watched his teammates die around him without really knowing where he could safely go back into because they'd taken admin. He was kind of cut off from that side and the fact that they were able to kill Retro early on as well and that they were able to get a lot more control and then just gunfights slowly went from there. It didn't help as well the loss of that first Yokai drone giving a little bit less intel because we're talking about Okay, yeah, they had a good intel heavy team, but they weren't often in good positions for it. Lost the Yokai drone, maybe didn't have the goo mines where they wanted to. And we talked about this, this map being balanced, right? But look who got banned. Two of the strongest operators on this map, yep. Maestro and Valkyrie. So they are at a slight disadvantage, whereas the operators that were banned on attack, I wouldn't say would be as game changing Retro. as the defenders that were banned. So it is leaning just off of the record that we've seen as well of this match, a bit more attacker sided. So Rest Prosody is going to have to kind of come back from that. But I do anticipate this is not likely to go a, uh, the, the full way. Now remember, you need seven rounds in total to win here, so two rounds away, potentially, the reciprocity, and they're not going to be running the smoke. I mentioned this before, but shotgun mute with SMG-11 is huge, and I'd like to thank the people that gave this suggestion to the developers over at Ubisoft and uh, promptly made the change. Before, only the P226 was available for as secondary here for... Uh, the Mute, well, now it's the SMG-11, which means you don't have to rely on smoke for shotgun setups because yeah. shotguns, you need to have one shotgun on the team, and sometimes it's the Echo that runs it. A lot of times it's the smoke, and now you're going to see a lot more smoke and Mute getting closer and closer in the pick rates because of how flexible uh, things become having that SMG-11 secondary. Well, especially with how good Echo is at playing Denial as well, because of that, you don't have to rely as much on smoke as you used to outside of just the shotgun, like you mentioned, but also in terms of denying the plant. 
However, that being said, you still have issues somewhat denying the plant in terms of the SMG-11 is not necessarily as strong as it used to be. Yeah. And, you you know, yeah, you have a C4 to potentially throw to help deny it along with those yokais, but it's not quite the same thing as having that smoke to completely cut off entryways. 100%. And you see the late reinforcement there from Reciprocity as they were not sure where Accelerate will be coming from. Um, and Fox will have the reinforcement by the entry. And Fox just actually runs downstairs. And this guy's oh, gonna... Again. Mm, unfortunate, they're gonna lose one of the Yokai's ears. Bio is doing the job of the IQ, which is pretty good. What you do is come in and take down as much utility as humanly possible. Now, I gotta imagine, after this round, they're gonna heavily anticipate admin pushes from mm -hmm. Accelerators. They've done it two rounds in a row now, regardless of the bomb site, and they're likely to continue to do so, so. I gotta imagine this might not work as well in each round. Fox still playing the spiral stairs, but on a different role this time. Instead of an Intel gather, he's on an Intel deny role. So we'll see how that works out. But again, Skies did lose the, pretty much the same drone that the Echo lost last time, which I think might have been Mark. So this is, uh, again, not going as well. But at the same time, 50 seconds left, and it, uh, Accelerate is yet to get a kill. If and Fox they, can play this well. Realistically, they've yet to take control of the, the floor, completely laxing still yeah. on the Jaeger in connector. He's not been taken out just yet, or at least, there you go. He's he's still in the, uh, the console chambers and, and just looking for, up. there you go. They, they've got support in this, and Reciprocity are trying to burn things out as long as much as possible, really. Shlongi having used his utility as well to try and push Mark away, but there's still one yokai available, and Laxing Spray then, as achieved, will go down. Look at the time here. 17 seconds on the clock as Laxing will get another clay pigeon shot from Mark the Shark. He finds two kills! Mark will get him out, and then Nyx will be the last one alive. Retro will get taken out, but to what avail? Laxing lands to 3k and makes the magic happen. There you go, Reciprocity will take the round, and an excellent bit of play here. They just sat back and let Accelerate take the floor, or top floor, very slowly. Accelerate were more afraid of Reciprocity than Reciprocity were. They just, okay, what do we do now, guys? Like, yeah. Should, well, they didn't want to make we the same mistakes that were Accelerate were making, which was rotating into crossfires that were set up. And because of that, it definitely played out a much better round. And you know, that's one of the things you can do when you say, okay, they take admin every time. Well, we don't have to give them the whole floor just because yep. they take admin. Because if this isn't the bomb site, the push on the, the other side, on the console site, isn't going to be as strong because that's not the bomb site. Because they're not going to dedicate as much to pushing that. Because, they you know, in that situation, they only have to secure the top floor. In this situation, they have to secure two different floors, potentially. That Attack slows things down. They play it bomb. smart, delay as long as possible. You saw them peeking tiny little melee holes, things like that. And Fox, controlling the stairs again, gave them the option to rotate up and help his teammate. You also saw, I believe it was the Rook, also rotate up. Mm -hmm. So because that everyone was like, you know, laxing has got good control, let's, let's just come back him up. And then he still managed to land three kills. So it was it was just good teamwork all around. You see Laxing up there with nine, trying to make sure Retro doesn't end the game as top fragger after all the fame he garnered. Uh, you know, assuming you didn't already know about Laxing, you definitely knew about him after USN. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Laxing played out of his mind at USN uh, with uh, Cloud9, and honestly, C9 got pretty darn close to securing their grand final spot. Yeah, it was definitely the case where uh, it was good to see Rogue finally win something, though. I know they've been struggling for it since literally the beginning of Pro League. I mean, so, I don't want to quote Fabian on this, but it just took a US-only tournament, an NA-only tournament. Your first mistake to was literally considering quoting Fabian. NA yeah. winning a tournament. Like, well, actually, here's the thing. Here's where you're wrong, kiddo. Oh, no. Dreamhack. Dreamhack Montreal. Well, who won that? Cloud9. These boys There here. you go. Exactly. Well, either way, and that's what's going to put them at invite. So we'll be seeing them there as 100%, well. 100%, 100%. Reciprocity will be at 6 Invitational, which is a huge thing. Uh, Goddess, as she has said on social media, will be there regardless. But, of course, she won't be playing on the squad as she has just joined. Well, we'll see if Accelerate can pull off their th third attempt at an admin push here. Again, very predictable coming out this time. And so if they're smart about it, they will be playing against that. Fox, again, going to be trying to play that pulse roll, but hopefully not Attackers going to give himself away as early and be forced into a, a less useful season. situation like he was previously. It looks like he's playing a little smarter in the bathroom, which I think will probably work out a little bit better in terms of being a, potentially available to stop a diffuse plant or at the very least slow it down to give the time for the rest of his teammates to get those frags and stop the diffuse plant even attempt. They are going to go with the Habana attempt as well again, so that means they would try and open up you know, what we saw before. And again, 
Retro not playing inside the A bomb site. So they are being smart about it this time. Retro, however, playing a bit farther than the connector. He's actually going to be playing all the way in the console office, but tight against the connector wall, using the one reinforcement here. And he's being smarter. He's, he's not exposing himself to that window. Because, hey, they're all pushing from Edwin's side. Guess what? They're not pushing that console window. Indeed, and th that's the thing. That's what happened in the previous round. Even though it was a different site, it's exactly what happened. It seems especially ironic against Retro, who that's all he did was push that window. Indeed, that, that is very true. Drone ready. That is very true. Well, when he played the, this position, it didn't really pan out too well for him a couple rounds ago, but um, we'll see how Accelerate try to push through this one as Chief will try to set up here to counter as he did before. Uh, any player that is set up in the connector. And what's the biggest change? Well, Retro is going to be playing inside of the console chamber. And because of the throwing mechanics, your smoke canister can easily be a uh, well, bit of practice set right on the entryway from the admins, admin and the stairs entry into projector. Yeah, I got the same buffs as the Valkyrie cam, but those on the Valkyrie cam got kind of changed afterwards. Thank God, because you would throw... The, oh, no, what is going on here? No one spotting the diffuser. Achieve still getting a kill, and Nyx will try to peek. Achieve will get another one as Fox will go down. Laxing jumping out here to get one and get two. <laughs> well, no, actually, that was Sky's to get the shot on Schlangi, but Crusher's last man alive with two players in from Reciprocity, and Diffuser already being down. He actually seized the opportunity and already put that Diffuser on the floor, but now, limited manpower. They'll have to peek in, and they have to do it in coordination. Skies and Laxing are still up, and there you go. Skies will get the kill. He should have enough time here to get to the Sable and win the game out here for Reciprocity, and there you go. 7-2 is our final scoreline here between Reciprocity and Accelerate Gaming. Our very first matchup of North America in Pro League Season 9. Well, I got to imagine, uh, glad he was playing a three-speed at that point to have enough time to be able to not only rotate around like that, but to be able to get back to the diffuser in time, because had he been playing a slower operator, might not have enough time to be able to pull that off. But there good teamwork go. between the two of them. Laxing there is trying to surpass Retro. Did manage to pull it off in the end by one kill. Yeah. So nicely done. I, That's all he wanted. Like we say all the time, kills aren't everything, but they certainly help. Yeah, when your opponents can't really do much because they're dead, yeah. I think that's... The beauty of this game, though, is it is a game where you can do things while you're dead, which includes